Is there any extra motivation or excitement for you now that you're finally going to get in there and put your hands on Derek? Um, I'm just as excited as I would be any opponent. I'm always happy to get in the octagon and uh, performance and earn another earn another uh, paycheck. So it's just like another fight for me. I am happy that I have one. Gotcha. Um, after the last fight, you were very honest about, you know what, I, it may not be the popular decision, but I'm going to fight the way I'm going to fight, and I'm going to be the heel. I mean, you could tell us personally, how did fans react to it? Did they kind of push back, or were they? did they like the fact that you were so honest about what you were going to do out there? Uh, reviews were mixed. Some of the fans enjoyed it. They enjoyed the honesty, and then um, we're like, hey, we don't want to watch you wrestling. So it was mixed reviews. I don't care, to be honest. Talking about the heavyweight title picture, you win. It's obvious that you're up there, but I don't have to tell you, there's obviously a lot going on. Very simply, do you see yourself waiting for a title shot, or do you think that you're going to end up being busy in 2021, belt or no belt? Um... I think I'll be waiting. When this fight, I'll be five in a row, five in a row, and I think that'll be. I think that should be enough. For me to warrant a, a title shot. My final question. I know early in the year that you had said some stuff that rubbed people the wrong way about uh, the women's fighters, specifically Rachel Ostovich. She is on your undercard. Have there been any awkward run-ins or anything addressed with that? No, I'm way over that. I'm a, I'm an adult. I, I have no things to worry about. I care about that. <laughs> Thank you, Curtis. Good luck. We'll take our next set of questions from Jim Barcelona with the Miami Herald. Yeah, thank you, Curtis. And and just how are you feeling going into this fight and your preparation for this fight? Did you have to do anything different just dealing with the pandemic or was it just business as usual with training? I feel great. My body feels great. Mind feels great. And yeah, the camp was, I mean, it was a little different because of the pandemic. Sometimes the gym wasn't open. Sometimes I didn't have guys where weren't available, but we made it, we made it work. And uh, I, I feel like it was the best camp we could, could have possibly had. Um, Who did you bring with you for this fight? My usual tournament, Benny Lopez, Cody Donovan, Austin Hubbard, and Zach Ponga. And Curtis, you're known also, I guess, for trying other things. Do you ever consider going against Yamamoto in a sumo rematch? Uh, yeah, I mean, I actually enjoyed that. That was fun. <laughs> uh, I, I think me having the experience of already trying it earlier this year, I think doing it again, I would do a little better than I did the first time. <laughs> you have the experience under your belt now, so to speak. And then lastly, too, in doing other things, I know your focus is on MMA and fighting, obviously. But when you're talking about doing other things like sumo wrestling, is pro wrestling something that you might consider later on down the road? I've actually, yeah, I never even thought about that as an option. I guess if I'm retired from this sport and they want to offer me decent amount of money to just pretend to, pretend to wrestle. Yeah, I'd do it. Well, you have a good look for it, too. You're a good fighter as well. Thank you much. We'll take our next questions from Omer Murtsavici with S Sport. Hello, Curtis. How are you? Fine, sir. How are you? Yeah, fine, man. Thanks. You almost beat everyone in the division. 
and you lost only Francis twice. Uh, if you beat Luis, who is in your mind on your next fight? Whoever's got the belt, I think I should be the. I think Francis should be fighting uh, Ipe for the belt, and whoever's the winner, that's what. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, what are your thoughts when you hear that to Derek saying that he's going to out wrestle you? What are your thoughts when you hear that kind of stuff? I think that's uh, comical. Yeah, for him. I think he just says it because he, he knows you guys are going to talk about it. Okay, so it's your second fight on the pandemic. So what? Uh, what's any difference between your first camp and this one? We have a better understanding of how to work around the new protocols at the gyms and our our uh, communication as a team between the coaches and my sparring partner. Uh, all the coaches together. We just have a better communication. We've been able to to adapt a lot easier. So. Okay. Uh, and my last one. What's your prediction for the fight? If I win, I don't know if it's the first, I don't know if it's first, second, third, fourth. I didn't be a split decision. I don't know. But I will win. Okay. Would you like to send a message to your Ecuadorian fans? Appreciate you guys watching and those that support me and all the support and those who don't like me here <laughs> okay uh, thank you for your time and good luck on your face we'll take our next question from jay anderson with kate cypress hey thanks oh, for yeah, your question yeah. yeah oh this oh. can you hear me yeah I'm not sure what that was either. Um, so, Curtis, you uh, you said ahead of this fight that uh, the UFC was protecting Derek. And I'm just curious now that it's here, did you actually feel that way? Or was that more of uh, an attempt to get the uh, the fight done, to get it signed? I mean, yeah, I felt, I don't, I'm not one of those guys who just says ridiculous stuff just to get fresh views. I said it, I meant it, I didn't mean it. Gave him Blagoy Ivanov. I don't think very highly of Blagoy Ivanov. Gave him Ir Latifi. I don't think very highly of Ir Latifi. Gave him a lot of guys who I don't think very highly of. Yes, I, they've been protecting me. Fair enough. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I know you said uh, this should get you the title fight and you would sit if necessary. Is there any worry that the arrival of John Jones, the heavyweight, could see him jump the line and then potentially you're looking at, you know, a year layoff? Yeah, that's the possibility. I'm, you know, I know it's very plausible and uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't I don't waste my, any of my brain cells or brain or t time just projecting on things out of my control. It could definitely happen, and there's nothing I can do about that. So, With that in mind, then, how important is it to make a statement in this fight uh, with Derek? It's not. My job is to win. Even if, even if I hit Derek with a flying armbar, if the people want John Jones, people are, are going to get John Jones. There's absolutely nothing I can do. It's out of all right. <clears throat> Fair enough. Thanks very much for your time. We'll take our next questions from Damon Marvin with MMA Fight. Hey, Curtis. Uh, you know, coming out of the last fight, you know, you're a guy who goes out there and wins by any means necessary. I think it's the best way to say it, whether you have to outgrapple somebody or, or knock them out like you did the Santos, whatever it is. But do you enjoy kind of being the spoiler a little bit when, when people, you know, you get upset about you go out there and wrestle and things like this but you are a tremendous wrestler like do you get a little smile just like 
playing that spoiler, like Derek Lewis, you know, guy who likes to go out and get big knockouts, this kind of things, like playing that spoiler to Derek Lewis. Like, do you get a little bit of a excitement about that? I mean, yeah, a little. It's a fraction. The biggest thing that gives me a smile is getting my hand raised because I know I'm getting the win bonus. And I guess, yeah, a very, very small part of the smile is I know a lot of the people would have preferred Derek to knock me out. That didn't happen. So, yeah, a little bit of the smile. Majority is because I like, I like winning, and I don't like you. Just uh, I don't care how. I don't understand why it makes people's that I use my wrestling, but that's that's not my intent. And can't is just to take the have the least resistance, and me using my wrestling because I'm a very good wrestler. There's always going to be the least resistance. Not taking the attention away from Derek Lewis, but when you look at the division as a whole and you look at your wrestling, do you feel like that is always going to be your greatest weapon? Because when you look at the heavyweight division, there aren't a lot of you know high level wrestlers. Obviously, you are uh, Stipe, you know, is a division one wrestler, but you know, again, a different kind of thing. But do you feel like that's always going to be your biggest weapon? Because until somebody can stop you from doing it, then your job is to take them down. Exactly. Um... Having the wrestling in my back pocket is a sorry. Having the wrestling in my back pocket is always it, it gives me a lot of confidence because I I know I can strike. I can play your game if that's what you want to do. But if anything goes bad, I can always take you down. So um, I think I'm I'm always going to rely on that. Even as my hands have grown and they will continue to grow, I think one of the biggest reasons that Ken Velasquez isn't here right now in the sport is because he listened to the fans and he fell in love with his hands and his body broke down from all the wars. Wars he did not need to have. He could have easily taken guys down at will, but he chose to stand and bang. His choice, good for him, but. His uh, body paid the price. My wrestling plays a major, major part in my plans for my activity. I don't want to be an old, broken down man in 10 years because of the stand-up wars I gave to fans who won't care about me after I retire. Do you feel like that's you know kind of what gets lost in the conversation here because everyone loves a big knockout we always talk about it with heavyweights you know it only takes one shot but you're going out there and fighting a very smart fight and we do see wrestlers get away from it you see wrestlers fall in love with their hands and suddenly it's like you never see them go for a takedown anymore do you feel like you've learned the lesson from you know Kane or, or other wrestlers who you've seen kind of fall into that pattern you've kind of learned from their mistakes and you don't want to make those same mistakes yeah, I've learned. I've learned from yeah Velasquez. I've learned even from Ronda Rousey. I know she wasn't exactly a wrestler per se, but she's a grappler, very very dominant grappler. Her advantage in that department, I think, was was always going to be pretty big. I think she she allowed herself to be. Uh, talked in the on the fans her hands when she could have armbarred girls for another two years and added on to her um, legacy but she wanted to want to strike with Holly Holm which bad idea and get head kicked Last one for me, Curtis, going into this fight, I know you said, you know, you're going to win however it takes you there. If you have to be a five-round decision, it's a five-round decision. But if you do get Derek Lewis down to the ground and you put him on his back, do you feel like it's going to be hard for him to survive five rounds with you on the ground? I know you actually said, you told me before, you were actually really impressed by Volkov, the way he was able to survive on the ground with you. But do you think Derek Lewis has that same kind of ability? Um. Yeah, he's he's very t- t- tough. He's hard to put away, but then again, a lot of heavyweights aren't able to 
put up the pace and the output that I put up. That's why, again, I was impressed by him. That was the first time that's ever happened. No one's been able to match me in my entertainment ground and pound. But then the more I watched that, the more I realized part of his containment of my ground and pound, his unique height and uh, length. Like he, he, he had really long, pretty long uh, torso. He was able to use that to uh, hold me in his uh, guard. I don't think anyone else on the roster had that ability. So, yes, I would be very, very surprised if uh, Derek was able to stand my ground and pound.